Hey guys, what's up? Are you tired of always plugging your guitar into a regular old amp and getting the same old boring sound day after day? Or maybe scrolling through hundreds of camper presets and never getting that unique, one-of-a-kind sound? Well, maybe you should plug into something like this. Or maybe something like this. Or even something like this. Maybe this is how you can sound unique, but you really wouldn't be the first one to do this. There's a bit of a legend about a certain amp that was used by Brian May called the Dickey amp. This was a circuit board from a transistor amplifier that John Deacon put in a bookshelf speaker and wired a jack to it so that a guitar could be plugged in. At first it was just meant to be a practice amplifier, but Brian took a bit of an interest in it and if you know Queen, you probably heard it on quite a few of their songs. Brian used it in really creative ways, imitating the sounds of other instruments, such as strings, brass, woodwinds. By layering the tracks, he actually created the whole sections. also used it as a guitar amp, but since this radio wasn't really designed to do that, the sounds were quite unique and hard to recreate. Now the original circuit board was taken from a transistor radio called the supersonic PR80 and getting those is nearly impossible. But if you want to get close, the only really important thing is the amplifier topology. And I've got one of those radios right here. On the left we have schematics for the supersonic PR80 and on the right the schematics for this all wave transistor rate. If we skip the receiver part of the circuit and just focus on the amplifier, we see that they got really similar topologies. They both use germanium transistors and transformers in the same way. We've got the first gain stage, then a transformer based phase inverter, and a transformer coupled push pull output stage. Since I don't have a bigger speaker or a travel booster like Brian's, the sound coming out of this won't be exactly like Brian's DK amp but we don't really want to do that. The point of this is to use anything to be creative, and if you are creative, anything can be used to make music unique. So let's first see if we can get anything useful out of just putting the microphone in front of this little speaker. <laughs> Okay, that's not bad, but can we use this type of gear for more modern music? In order to do that, I won't be just using this little radio, but also an old record player and a old tube radio. You see, with modern recording gear and all the plugins available, we can take just about any sound and make it work in a context of a song. Now let's try to play a modern song on this old tube radio. Sounds a bit boring, but as I've said, there are a lot of plugins we can throw on this track and also add a few instruments to make a weird version of this song. sounds better, but now let's reverse the thinking and instead of processing a not a very good sound source, let's use this gear to process a sterile digital recording and make it sound interesting. I've arranged the radios in a half circle so that we get a nice stereo image when recording with a Lewitt LCD 640TS. It's positioned so that it will capture the tube radio on the left, the transistor radio on the right and the record player in the middle. I've installed jacks on all of these so we can now connect these to the interface and send some sounds through it. My goal here is to make a lo-fi version of a piano, hi-hat and clap sounds. I'll send out the treble part of the piano through this transistor radio, the bass part of the piano through this tube radio, the hi-hat through the record player and the claps through all of them. Let's see first how that sounds. Yeah. 
yeah, it sounds pretty lo-fi. Let's add some hi-fi sounds to this and see if we can make these sounds work in a context of a pop song. And let's also add a simple guitar part to the chorus. Since I started this video with Brian May and his use of the DK amp to create various sounds of strings and brass, I'm gonna try to create some string sounds for the chorus part. I'll use a fuzz pedal that is basically a clone of the Zvex Woolly Mammoth, a record player and a ribbon microphone set in front of it. I think that works pretty well. Let's mix all of these tracks together and see if it sounds any good. I'm not saying you go plugging your guitars into amps, TVs, radios and everything around the house. My point is really that you don't let your gear or the lack of it get in the way of your creativity. Everything is a tool and if you learn how to use it, you can create something personal and unique that will be really hard to recreate. Now stuff like these radios and record players can be used to achieve really low-fi sounds because of their enormous effect on frequency response and distortion and since you actually have to use a microphone to get these sounds, that makes the whole thing worse. So you really can't use it regularly in mixes. But there is a way to turn this $20 radio into a nice distortion device that you can use every day in the studio. And we'll take a look at that in the future video, so if you don't want to miss it, subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching and stay creative!